Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, we have a special guest joining us. Russ Taff is here. Russ. Hey, Mitch. Thanks for being here at Sweetwater. We appreciate you coming in. My pleasure. You're doing My a pleasure. recording workshop in the studio. Yes. And a concert here tomorrow night as well. Mm -hmm. So lots of great stuff going on. Mm -hmm. we, we're, uh, we're looking forward to all that. Well, it, it's, a, it's a great situation. This is my first time here, but there's probably 20 um, people from across the country that want to learn uh, engineering. They are aspiring artists themselves, mm -hmm. and they get to spend uh, three days in the studio watching the whole process go on, and then uh, the end of the third day, the mixing and everything else, and then we'll do a concert here, kind of an unplugged thing with the band nice. uh, from uh, Nashville. And we were, you were just talking about Tom Hemby, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, caliber of players are, are just some of the they're the a, a team in Nashville for session work. So right. I'm really looking forward. To yeah, it. Oh, what a treat. It's going to be mm -hmm. great to listen to it as well. So what you're doing is you're going in and you're laying down a song or yeah. songs. Yeah. And so the, the people who attend the workshop get to see the whole process from beginning to, to end, the whole thing. Right. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people have, uh, was, uh, have home studios, mm -hmm. but they've never seen tracking go on. You know, they've never seen a live drummer and how they get sounds and, and the guitar player, you know, the different effects and things like that. So it's just right. an incredible opportunity for people to see what really goes on in right. a major studio. Right, right. And even not even being just a fly on the wall, because you're right there. They're, oh, yeah. they're in the control room. They can ask questions. They, yep. can, uh, they can kind of follow the whole thing. So it really is a great educational opportunity. Yeah, so. and uh, they spent time with the bass player, just talking about it. They spent time with the guitar player. They spent time you know, with the drummer mm -hmm. and, and uh, the bass player. And so you really get to hear firsthand what their take of all this these years of experience uh, how they approach it, how they feel about it, and uh, I mean, it's just a crash course, but you leave with a closet full of information. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. You're pretty much set to uh, set to go for yourself yeah. then at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So you have had an amazing career. Ah. If uh, if my numbers are right, something like six Grammys, six eighteen Grammy, Dove Awards, 18. something like that. Incredible! Uh, congratulations mm -hmm. on all oh, that thanks. success. Yeah. Thanks. You stay out here long enough, they'll they'll <laughs> recognize you. <laughs> right. We started uh, very young, mm -hmm. listening to gospel music. How did you get uh, How did you get started with the music? Side well, of my daddy was a preacher in mm -hmm. this small little church, and my mother was a singer, and she sang with her sisters, great singers, just great singers, and. And it was Pentecostal, so it was everything was at eleven. I mean, you know, it was a lot of a lot of energy. Right. And so I grew up um, in church. We were in church four nights a week, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess the more you were in church, the less you would sin. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but what what was incredible was the music. Uh -huh. And um, Mama would sing, and so I started singing at a very early age with my brothers, and I had four brothers. And so I learned to play guitar and I learned to sing and uh, I started performing. I mean, when I was, you know, seven, mm -hmm. uh, I would start singing in church. And but what a great opportunity to, to be able to at such an early age to um, to be able to, to grow and sing. And because right. I, I, was, I was talking to Shania Twain one time and she said she was like 13, 14, 15 in her uh, her stepdad I th would take her to the clubs, and but she was like already in her mid-teens mm -hmm. before she started performing live. And uh, just how many um, of artists that 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 they grew up in church and uh, at start at such an early age that um, that their gifts develop, mm -hmm. you know, faster than others because they have an opportunity to use it all the time. Right, right. I would expect too that. Uh, just being on stage at that age, you're probably not as self-conscious as you are as a 14, 15 year old. You, know, you can get up there and kind of, kind of let it go. Yeah, and you, you know, at that little, it was my aunts and uncles, and and so you know, whatever you did was great. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so you developed a real healthy attitude about your self-esteem. Yeah, you know, exactly. Boy, they think yeah. I'm great, man. <laughs> <laughs> I must be something, right? I must be something. But it was, you know, it was a great. Uh, and then I started songwriting uh, just out of the need of something I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it, mm -hmm. and. Um, because um, I started with my little band, and we were, uh, I guess I was 16, we were called the Sound of Joy, and we were in Arkansas, Dad was pastoring there, and um, just trying to introduce other students to Christian music, contemporary mm -hmm. Christian music, and what it was, and so w the five of us would take Beatles songs and, you know, 
write lyrics, Christian lyrics to them and things like that, right. uh, which is so goofy, you know, I want to hold God's hand. <laughs> 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 but it introduced me then to songwriting and the craft and the art of songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I began to pursue that and really look at it, how to, you know, take a phrase and turn it um, to make it fit and say as much as you can say in one sentence. Right. Um, and that balance between saying too much and not saying enough, but saying it just right. Right. Just right. So that that was has always been a very rewarding thing to, mm -hmm. and I do it still, you know, uh, while I'm getting ready to start a new project next month. And so it's just sitting with my guitar again, you know, and writing and singing and getting with friends and writing and singing. And uh, Nashville is such a reservoir of of songwriters. Mm -hmm. And so many great songwriters live there. And, right. And uh, so, you know, I, I reach out to them and we get together and we write. And uh, so, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just been an incredible journey. Yeah. Just an incredible journey. And right. to be able to do what I love and uh, it, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, Sounds of Joy, your first band. Right. That band, uh, did you record an album? With that band? Yeah, we we did a uh, a little custom record. We mm -hmm. were in Hot Springs, Arkansas, but we went to Oklahoma City, and there was this group called Sunlight, and uh, it wound up they started touring with Andre Crouch, and but it was uh, Billy Maxwell, um, Hadley Hawkinsmith, and and that that crew of great great musicians. That um, and then they had a long career just playing at the Baked Potato out in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, Abraham Laboriel and those guys, and so sure. I would go out, and it was always fun. I made in the '80s. I spent, I made three records out there, and it was always Monday night. We'd head to the Baked Potato, you know, and listen right. to these great players. Those right. great players. Yeah, what a treat! What mm -hmm. a treat! So the sounds of joy led to a great opportunity for you, though. Yeah, we were trying to introduce our town to. Um, a Christian music that people could relate to. Because mm -hmm. you know, when you say gospel, a lot of times they think George Beverly Shea. Um, but it is a whole genre of artists that write uh, about their faith mm -hmm. and uh, try to bring hope and uh, joy. But we raised some money to bring a group called the Imperials into Hot Springs. Right. Just trying to introduce our town to uh, and they had just stopped traveling with Elvis, and they were his backup singers for years, mm -hmm. and Jimmy Dean. Mm -hmm. They did his TV show and his, his time in Vegas, and they had gone back just to straight gospel again. And I did uh, 20 minutes, my little band did 20 minutes before they came on. Okay. And uh, they heard me sing, and I, I was, um, you know, I, they were such a great band, and, um, I had one of those old little Instamatic -y kind of cameras that had the bulb on top and it would sure. you know, yeah, turn. Yeah, return. Sure. <laughs> and I had a friend of mine, I, I knew that we were going to do an encore and they were going to invite my little band back up there. And so I asked my friend, I said, listen, you know, when I get up there with those guys, I'm 17, you know, I, I, you know, get my picture with them. I, I wanted to have that. Of course. You know, to keep. And he was a very shy guy. And so during the encore, he jumps up one time, takes one picture and sits down. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Use the whole roll of film. Yeah, but, but he was just too shy, I guess, to do it. So I ran to Kmart the next day, and I you know, it take, used to take like three days, four days to develop right, it. Right, right. And I was so disappointed when it came back. It was nine guys waist down. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, oh, man, my chance. You want that, right, right, right. But uh, two years later, they uh, they were getting ready to replace uh, a singer, mm -hmm. and they remembered me and asked me to come to Nashville and try out. And then they hired me that night, and that that you know the first time at 22 on the road professionally mm -hmm. uh, doing this, and uh, a great opportunity to learn because they were already uh, touring, playing music halls, and and things like that. Right. Uh, but they taught me so much so much and I left there left them and I started a solo career mm -hmm. and I did uh, probably almost 20 years of just traveling with the band and in the bus and sound and lights and and all of that and um, and that uh, kind of began to wind down and so Bill Gaither 
um, called me up and asked me if I'd start traveling with them. Mm -hmm. uh, their their homecoming. They have, you know, they do a TV show, a bunch of artists on stage, and and it's just straight old gospel. And, right. Uh, and so I've been doing that, I guess, the last 13 years. Right. Uh, with them and and still doing. Uh, the contemporary thing also, mm -hmm. uh, that world has just really opened back up to me again. So um, I, I don't know, at this age, it's just fun. Sure. You, you know, you're young and you, you got to break that single and you're out there. But, but these days, it's, it's about the music and just enjoying it. And, right. And if they love it, great. If they don't, well, I'm enjoying it. You know? Yeah, right, so, right. So it, 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 it's, but it just gets back to that. I do it because I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I do it because it's in me, and um, and there's enough people that's liking it that I can pay my bills, so I'm grateful. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wonderful thing, wonderful thing. So listening to your vocals, I hear a uh, I hear a, a real blues influence in a lot of the stuff that you sing. Mm -hmm. Does that come from a specific point, or how does that influence come into the uh, the, the uh, contemporary Christian and the gospel side of it? Well, my my mother uh, at that in that little uh, church in our home, we weren't allowed to have a TV, and. Uh, and so all we had for entertainment was Mama's record collection. Mm -hmm. And she worked in the fields out in the San Joaquin Valley picking grapes, picking oranges and, and uh, lemons. And, uh, but she would take uh, her, part of her money every month and buy two LPs. Hmm. And she loved um, white gospel, the Happy Goodmans and uh, Statesmen and things like that. But her favorite singer was Mahalia Jackson. Mm -hmm. And so she had a great collection of Blind Willie Johnson, uh, Claire Ward, and just a whole slew. And so I grew up with that diet constantly of white and black, white and black. And right. out of that, I kind of developed my own style of, uh, you know, to where it is bluesy. Right. Uh, but because it, it has that uh, black gospel feel to it, mm -hmm. that still is probably my favorite music. Is just that old, old black gospel stuff, you know, that's right. just so raw and so real. And they set up a mic in a church, you know, yeah. <laughs> and they go for it. But it's so emotional. Mm -hmm. It's just so emotional. So that's where that, that uh, kind of blues uh, feel come from, is just that diet of black and white gospel. Right, right, right. Well, it's, it's wonderful. One of the other things I noticed is, is you sing hard. You get up yeah. there and you, you, you sing it out there. Do you have advice for singers? Because that, that can be a problem for singers with their voice to be, to be singing that hard all yeah. the time and things. What do you do mm -hmm. to keep your voice in good shape? Well, um, I sing hard and, and I grew up singing that way. But if I have good monitors, that I, then you don't overdo it. Uh -huh. You don't overdo it. And um, you know, your vocal just kind of sits there real, real, real soft and sweet, but yet strong and you don't overpower mm -hmm. and you can you can jump and kick it into odor drive when you need to and then back up and but then you know after you hit it pretty hard like that to bring in a ballad and just drop it down and let it all kind of settle back down but you know used to i could do maybe like like five pow it just boom in a row but now you know i'll drop it back and break it up mm -hmm. um but uh you know just pacing just really pacing and when I'm on the road, I really try to sleep at least eight hours a night. Mm -hmm. If I can sleep eight hours, um, and I gargle salt water a whole lot. Okay. I gargle salt water, and, and I do vocal exercises just to keep it loose so I just don't jump up and start screaming. You know, right, right. That it's very loose, and, and I can push it and back up and push it and back up. But mm -hmm. uh, I went to college for two years, and I was involved in the music program, and they tried to get me to sing right, and but I, you know, I just already kind of locked into what I was doing, and mm -hmm. and so finally I just got frustrated <laughs> and right. said, "Well, I'll just do it my <laughs> way." And everybody said, "Well, you're going to burn your voice out, and you're going to get nodes and all that." But here, you know, here I am, 38 years later, and it's still there. And, sure. And uh, um, there have been several other singers that, that are younger than me that burn it out, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't treat it right and. And they screamed and they screamed and they screamed and you, your voice just can't take it. Right. But if there's always just that balance that you can push and then back up and do a soft, easy ballad to let everything kind of settle back down, and then you can jump in and hit it hard again. Uh, but it's just little things like that, drinking a lot of water, keeping it moist, because when your throat is dry, it'll strip it. 
you know, right. you know, strip it. And one thing that has been very important for me that I, I learned, I sweat so much when I sing, and the only times I've lost my voice, uh, and it's been a handful, is I would leave the theater and it's cold mm -hmm. and I don't rap and cover. And so I'm going from a hot, sweaty situation and I step outside in that cold, freezing air and I've done that and I've lost my voice like three times, four times mm -hmm. because of that. But it's just a matter of just like our bodies, you take care of it and it'll last a whole lot longer. Sure. Sure. It, it also appears to me, again, watching videos and listening to you, that you really find, have found what's comfortable for you as well, because you mentioned screaming, and it doesn't look like you're straining. You're singing hard, yeah. and you're, you're getting the, the grit and the gravel and the depth in your voice, but it doesn't mm -hmm. look like you're really screaming. You're, you're yeah. comfortable with what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, um, back in the early days, and, uh, there's that high, hard sound that producers really liked. Uh, and we would key things too high just to make me really stretch. Mm -hmm. um, it sounded okay on a record, but you can't do it night after night after night. So with the band, I'd drop it down a half a step uh -huh. and, so, and still get the fire, but without overdoing it. Right. And, um, but, you know, d doing that, it didn't overdo it, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I could maintain and go and sleep at night and gargle with salt water and, um, and just just keep it warm mm -hmm. and going. Um, it's it's held in. Yeah. I held on all these years. Yeah, well, that's great advice. Mm -hmm. Great advice. So you have uh, uh, we've talked obviously about the, the gospel and the Christian, but you have a very diverse uh, uh, catalog that you, of mm -hmm. uh, players you've worked with. Everybody from Glenn Campbell to Melissa Manchester to Iris Dement. I saw on, on the yeah. list and all those different people. How did some of those projects come about? Um, a, a lot of it was just they had heard me mm -hmm. or they were friends and uh, wanted, wanted me to do, sometimes it was a producer that knew both of us and he thought, well, man, their voices would sound great together. Mm -hmm. um, but th they just happened. I mean, I, I wasn't out looking for them. Um, right. But uh, I've been able to, to uh, I was looking the other day at the duets that I've done and Word Records is getting ready to put out uh, duets that I've done over the years. Hmm. They took the imperial years and uh, they call it the beginnings and just put that out and they call it, the next one was the ultimate collection, this 80s and 90s. Uh, and now they're going to release a duets thing with just all the duets that I've done over the years. Nice. So, so I, I don't know, it, it's just nice after all these years that they're bringing back some of the stuff, yeah. you know, and that it stood the test of time. Oh yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So they're able to gather all those from all those diverse artists and yeah. labels and everything, get them all in mm -hmm. one. That's, that's wonderful. That's yeah. a, that's got to be a challenge to bring all that together. You know, yeah. with all the licensing and all those uh, those issues well, that those people have to deal with, right? This day in the music business, people are looking for any way to, <laughs> <laughs> to sell something. Right, right, exactly. You sure, absolutely. No, that's that's wonderful. We we'll look forward to uh, look forward to that. So if you had. Uh, advice that you could give to a young singer, or even a not so young singer, who wanted to advance their career, move forward in, uh, in the industry, what kind of things would you suggest to them? Well, you know, you, you, you look at actors that have um, stood the test of time, and you mm -hmm. look at the early parts of their career, they just didn't do everything that came along, and what they did was quality, mm -hmm. you know, very quality, and then that developed a reputation and I've tried to do with everything I, I, I've done, just make it excellent. Just really, really make it excellent. And uh, approaching every project is this may be the last one I make. So right. let's make it as good as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And take, take time. Uh, I, I remember uh, talking to Christopher Cross, you know, sailing takes me away. Yeah, sure. He said uh, in an interview for, for uh, Rolling Stone, he said, I had 25 years to make my first record. And he said, my second record, they wanted it in six months. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of people, they, they just jump in and record, jump in and record. And, and in the gospel marketplace, there's a lot of them that do one every year. But, you know, I've never been able, it seemed like it's always like two and a half, three years before I come out with something new. Mm -hmm. But I, I want it to be good. And that when they play a song, it wasn't just thrown on there, you know, that it made sense. Right. And, um, but I've just tried to in every, in every 
way that I've went is just be as excellent as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And to think, you know, when I would record it so that I could look 20, back 20 years and say, you know what, that was a great piece of work. That was a right. great piece of work. So, I, you know, I just think um, about just making sure what you do is, uh, is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that sense. And, you know, I, I, when I first started, and people, a lot of people ask me, how do you break into the, the, the industry and stuff? But when I was younger, the more I sang, the, the stronger my voice got. And as I sang, I learned my craft. But it's funny, I sang at old folks' homes, mm -hmm. you know, at my teams, I, you know, uh, I, I would sing uh, at the, the mental ward in our, on our uh, you know, little hospital in right. town. Right, sure. But, and I would go to churches. It was just any place that would open a door. And there was a lot of coffee houses and stuff when I started. And, mm -hmm. and you don't make a whole lot at all, but, but I would go and I would sing and I would work. And, uh, and as I did that, you know, all the most, it just started growing and started growing. But, um, but if you keep it honest and you keep it real, um, it, it's, uh, it will put you in a class that's different than most, mm -hmm. you know, different than most. Right, right, great advice. So be a little selective. Yep. And don't just take everything that comes along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, especially for writers, a lot of times, uh, because we wrote it, we don't spend time maybe looking at it a second time and a third time is how can we improve it? How can we improve it? Mm -hmm. And I've learned to do that with my work, um, that you write it, yeah, but now let's scope it and let's really look at it and make it tighter and make, mm -hmm. it, uh, make it more precise. And so when actually it goes on the record that it is a great piece of work. Right. And uh, I, I hate catchphrases, you know, just to rhyme something. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was guilty of that when I was younger, you know. You're just looking for the rhyme. And, uh, but you just learn over time that, that it, it's heart, it's soul, it's spirit. It's, it's that that's in a song that, that it makes it powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, when I hear Peter Gabriel, you know, Red Rain or Robbie Robinson and, you know, a lot of the people that I, I listened to growing up, their stuff was so emotional mm -hmm. and so powerful. I mean, you know, the, 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 the Rolling Stones, I mean, you know, Brown Sugar, I, I saw them live years ago and there was just something so, I don't want to use their magical, but it, it was almost hypnotic. It was so real. Mm -hmm. It was like the first time I heard Pink Floyd, it was like, Man, you know, this, this right. stuff, it's so good, it goes beyond just, just this good piece of work to this place that it is bigger than life, mm -hmm. and it takes you somewhere. Right. You know, I would lay there with my headphones on and just listen to Dark Side of the Moon, and, and uh, but, uh, I, you know, I spent time with the people, listening to the people that I admired. Mm -hmm. and tried to pattern what I did writing wise after like Billy Joel who is just so good and and uh, so in, anyway you know I, I just want people to just make sure it's quality right uh, because a lot of times you only get maybe one or two shots and mm -hmm. so don't come in with something you know just kind of okay make it sure. great right make it great right great advice I love it I love it. Russ, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thanks, Mitchell. You've got this workshop this whole weekend and a concert tomorrow night, and then you're on, on the road. You've got uh, gigs booked with uh, oh, yeah. Gaither Homecoming through, yeah. uh, I think I saw through October or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a busy guy and working on a new project you yeah. said coming out. So. Oh, but it's fun these days. Wonderful. It's fun these days. <laughs> that, that's what's important, right? <laughs> Absolutely. As long as you're enjoying it. Absolutely. Great to see you. Thanks for thanks, being Mitchell. here. Thanks, Mitchell. Appreciate it. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute.